If you know you are nothing without God, come on, give God some praise in the house. Anybody know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, that you probably would not have made it through 2013? I just wish I could get about seven folks that don't mind giving God praise. Not for what he's about to do in 2014, but is there anybody that owes God some praise for what he already did in 2013? This is retro praise. Come on, give God some glory in this house. Somebody tell God, God, thank you. Because I ain't nothing without you. Folks look at me and think that I am that what I sometimes don't feel I am myself. But God, I thank you that over the years I've learned that it's been you all the time that's been keeping me. It's been you all the time that's been covering me. When I didn't love myself, God, I thank you, God, you love me. God, I'm nothing without you. Hallelujah. Look at somebody, tell them, I need my God. I need God. I, I need him. I need him. I need him. Why don't you hug three folks, tell them I'm nothing without God. Just hug three folks, tell them I'm nothing without God. Hey, you don't know who I used to be. <laughs> I've tried without God. And without God, I'm like a ship without a sail. Lord have mercy. Wondrously, aimlessly. But God, I thank you. Is there a witness in the house that when I found Jesus, <laughs> Lord have mercy, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Oh, Lord. But I thank God that I didn't just find Jesus. But is there a witness in the house that when you were running around by yourself, that when you were lost, that God found you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, God. You can take your seats. Oh, Lord, I feel like preaching. <laughs> I like when I feel preached on me early. I ain't even read scripture yet, and I'm rubbing my side of my pants. <laughs> I feel preach in this house. If you would turn with me to Matthew, the fifth chapter, we want to thank God for the presence of these great ministers of the gospel. We thank God for uh, the Bennett's in the house. Amen. We want to thank God right here, uh, brothers and sisters in ministry, and we are grateful for them being here with us on uh, this night. If you would turn to Matthew, the fifth chapter, looking at verses uh, one through five. Looking at verses 1 through 5. Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 5. Reading NIV version, it reads as such. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. Yep. The ghost is on me, Lord. Let's see what Matthew has to say. <laughs> Speak, Lord. Romans, the fifth chapter. I'm sorry, Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter, looking at verses one through five. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope, somebody say hope, of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance perseverance character and character hope somebody say hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us I ask that you all would pray with myself and pastor as we tag team tonight on the sermon topic hashtag hold on to hope brothers and my sisters on as you grab your neighbor by the hand as we go to God in the word of prayer, it was uh, during this season that the Lord whispered to us that for 2014 of a community of hope, this is going to be the year of hope. Uh, 2014 is going to be the year of hope. Uh, and that's why we are preaching this sermon, hold on to hope. Let us look to God. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. God, we thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. But most of all, God, we thank you for your power. So God, right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for my brother and myself. And I thank you, God, for how we believe you shall use us, God, in a mighty fashion on this day. Uh, because somebody here needs a word of hope. Uh, somebody here has been going through it, God, but they need to hear, God, a word of hope. 
And so, God, right now, in Jesus' name, grab a hold of us. Uh, use us, God, to your honor, to your glory. Uh, God, you are the promise keeper. You promise the deliverance of the preached word with power so your people would be delivered, your people would be set free. Uh, do it today. In Jesus' name, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hold on. Hashtag. Hashtag. Hold on. The number two. All caps. H-O-P-E. Hold on to hope. Look at somebody tell them you got to hold on to hope. You got to hold. You got to hold on to hope. Uh, sometimes, sometimes one of the hardest things to have to deal with as a preacher of the gospel, especially at the end of the year, is recognizing and realizing that everyone did not make it. Uh, and I'm not really talking about everyone did not make it physically. Uh, but I'm talking about that at the end of the year, that there are people who were connected to God at the beginning of 2013, but somewhere during this year, they gave up on God and they lost a hold of their hope. Uh, for whatever reason it was, I don't know, but some folks have lost hope. Uh, it may have been a storm that made them lose their hope. It may have been a bad breakup where they lost their hope. It may have been a devastating situation that they went through uh, where they found themselves uh, uh, releasing their hope. It may have been a loss of a loved one, a financial disaster, but for one reason or another, they lost a hold of their hope. And, and the worst thing for a Christian is to lose hope. Uh, let me help somebody because a hopeless Christian is similar to a waterless ocean. Uh, it, it really doesn't make sense. It's not really uh, logical. But every day the enemy has sent out attacks on Christians throughout the year hoping he can persuade them to lose hope in God. A matter of fact, if we're honest, some of us here, we know some folks who lost their hope. Is there anybody here that can raise their hand because you know there's a family member or a friend who used to pray to God, but now they're nowhere near connected to their God? And if we're honest enough to admit it, not only do we know some folks who lost hope, but uh, many of us are recovering hope addicts uh, because all of us at one time or another let go of our hope. But on this last day of 2013, our prayer for you in 2014 is that you hashtag hold on to hope. You see, let me help somebody. Uh, you got to understand that hope is not just a good idea. Hope is not just a figment of our imagination. Hope is not some fairy tale or just a mere philosophy, but you can actually hold on to this hope. You see, hope may be invisible to the naked eye, but it is far from intangible and untouchable to the spiritual eye. Somebody wants to know, how do you know, Reverend, that hope is something we can hold on to? Well, the reason I know is because I've held on to hope many times in my own life, and I know that hope kept me I held on to hope when my mama was in the ICU and hope told me she was going to be alright. I held on to hope when people I love went home to be with God and hope reminded me that they were still with me. I held on to hope when I was unemployed and didn't know how bills would get paid but I kept my hope and hope let me know that I couldn't go back to the streets to make ends meet. I held on to hope when I was down in hope picked me up. I held on to hope in my greatest storms and hope became my life raft. I held on to hope when haters tried to destroy me but I thank God that hope became my best friend. How do I know that I can hold on hope because hope's always been there and my hope is built Lord have mercy on nothing less so I don't know about you but hope has been there for me whenever I held on hope never let me go hope has shown me that if you just hang on you can make it through hope has sustained me hope has encouraged me hope has changed me hope has delivered me hope has shown me how to fight I thank God I got some fighters in the house cause you still hold it on to your hope. 
But I know, I know in the midst of all those who are here uh, that somebody came on this last night uh, of 2013 uh, needing to be reminded uh, to hashtag hold on to your hope. Uh, you see, somebody came in uh, feeling like they're at the end of their rope uh, and aren't even sure uh, why they came to church tonight. Uh, somebody's watching online, uh, not because you wanted to, uh, but there was something in you uh, that said, I need to look uh, and get a word from God uh, because you found yourself uh, a little low uh, on your hope. Uh, but I just want to let you know uh, that you're in the right place uh, at the right time uh, to get all the hope God's got for you because God's got some hope with your name Lord have mercy how do I know how do I know because when my car is getting a little low on gas I understand that if I can just get my gas, my car to the gas station I don't care how it gets there sometimes it, I can feel it start to putter and I say God just help me get to the gas station sometimes I ran out of gas right at the gas station and I had to push it but I said if I can just get to the gas station uh, and fill it up. Uh, I can go where I need to go. Uh, somebody, uh, you just missed it because uh, you need to understand uh, you came in this night uh, a little low on hope. Uh, what's the name of this church? Uh, Community of Hope. Uh, we just a filling station uh, to give you the hope uh, you've been looking for. Oh, Jesus, I feel somebody, you feel God filling you up right now. Look at somebody, tell him, he's filling me up. I feel my hope. I was down, but I feel. Oh, come on, somebody give God glory in the house today. If you know you're in the right place at the right time. I am. My brothers and my sisters, one of the first things you've got to understand if you're going to hold on to your hope is you've got to let go of your suffering. I turn to somebody, tell them, baby, it's time to let it go. Time to let it go. It's time to let it go. Ah, yes, indeed. In the Bible, in the fifth chapter of Romans, and it says, it says in that second verse, and going on, it says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, uh, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love uh, into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. And, and one of the things I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, is one of the challenges that we face and when we're holding on to our hope is that we end up holding on to our tribulation harder than our hope. Uh, that many of us get so content, we get so stuck in our struggle uh, that we feel more content holding on to our struggle than holding on to Jesus. And so, and, and so we get so content holding on to our mess uh, uh, that we don't want to hold on to hope and see what God's possibility can be uh, because we're so used to the tragedy of the reality that is in front of us. Uh, uh, but I've come by to tell somebody the devil is a liar. Uh, I've come by to tell somebody today is the day for you to let go of that mess. Uh, Today is the day for you to let go of that struggle. And when I look at this scripture, I love this scripture because it's amazing to me. The scripture writer says, oh, but also we rejoice in suffering. And it did not make sense for me to why the scripture writer would say we rejoice in suffering. Oh, but the scripture writer before that said, and we rejoice in hope. And I did not understand how you can rejoice in hope and then say, and also we rejoice in suffering. Oh, but what the scripture writer went on to say is because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Okay, that been over somebody said, let me come back for you uh, because I used to be slow myself. Uh, you've got to understand that the scripture writer lets you know uh, that I rejoice in hope, uh, but I also rejoice in suffering. Uh, but you've got to understand that my life does not stop at suffering uh, uh, because my suffering went somewhere. Uh, uh, my suffering went to perseverance uh, and perseverance went to character and character went to hope. You've got to understand that you've gotten it twisted because you want to stay stuck in suffering. But you don't stay stuck in suffering. But it's time for you to move past suffering. Let me help somebody real quickly. There's a story, there's a story, there's a story about a young man. There's a story about a young boy. 
This young boy uh, fell down into a well. He was in a country area. He fell down into a well. He was playing where he should not have been playing, and he fell down into a well. Um, and all the fire department came out to try to get him up out of this well. Uh, the fire department is trying all of these tactics to get him up out of this well. And what they end up doing is they end up dropping into the well a safety harness. Uh, a safety harness is so that the young man can put it around himself, and they can pull him up out of the well. Uh, uh, the fire department tells him, to put the harness on, he puts the harness on, Reverend Chris. Uh, but as he puts the harness on, the fire department keeps trying to pull him up. Uh, but they're not able to pull him up. Uh, the fire department keeps pulling, and, and there's something that is holding him down in that well. Uh, the fire department cannot see into the well. Uh, but they tell the young boy, young boy, uh, uh, we're having a problem pulling you up. What is keeping you stuck? Uh, but they realize that the young boy, when he fell down into the well, uh, while he was in the well all by himself in in the dark. Uh, there was a pipe down there in the well uh, that he held on to uh, and it made him feel a little bit more secure. Uh, that in the darkness uh, he held on to that pipe uh, because it made him feel like he wouldn't slide no more farther down. Uh, he held on to that pipe uh, because it was all that he knew in the midst of the darkness uh, of the pit that he was in. Uh, but the fire department had to coach him uh, to let go of the pipe uh, in the midst of his pit uh, to let him know that we've got something on you. Now if you can hold on to this rope, it'll get you up out of that pit. And I've come by to tell somebody today, you've got comfortable holding on to your struggle. You've got comfortable holding on to your problem. You've got comfortable holding on to your pain in the midst of your pit. But God says let it go and hold on to hope. There's hope that will lift you. There's hope that will carry you. Uh, they say that young boy said, Mr. Fireman, I don't want to let go of this pipe because I'm not sure you're strong enough to get me out. And the fireman said, young man, you don't understand. It's not just me up here, but we got the whole fire department up here. You're not able to see in your pit. All of the folks that are about to lift you out. Have I got somebody in here that you know you've got to grab a hold of hope because you can't see what the Lord is working look at somebody tell them you gotta let it go you gotta let it go Lord have mercy no you won't no you won't <laughs> you won't be <laughs> I'm not gonna get in this fire and burn up you will bring that back down <laughs> look at somebody tell them let it go Lord somebody somebody need to have mercy. <laughs> I wish I could get about seven folks that would go ahead and let go of something because when you let go of it, that's when you can really give God praise. Is anybody in here that don't mind giving God glory and telling God, God, I let it go. I'm going to let it go. go I'm letting it go just just tap three folks tell them let it go let it go even when you take your seat just tap just tell them let it go let it go let it go you done held on it for all of 2013 Lord have mercy but God is saying don't bring that mess into 2014 because where I'm trying to take you I can't take you there until you let it until you let it until you let it until you let it go until you let it go Lord have mercy Lord I don't I don't know what that struggle is, but let it go. I don't, I don't know what that habit is, but let it go. I don't know how, I don't know who that dude is, but oh Lord have mercy. Oh Jesus. You better let it. Let it go, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Let it go. Just tap one more person. Tell them I'm letting some stuff go tonight. I'm letting some. I'm look at somebody. Tell them I. Tell them you got two hours and 45 minutes to let it go. Let it go. No. Don't take that nonsense into 2014. You need to let that thing go right here. You, you still got time. You still got time. About 
to let it go. I'm about to let this thing. I'm about to let it go. The second thing, the second thing, the second thing that we have to know that in order to hashtag hold on to hope, the second thing we have to understand in the midst of uh, this next year, 2014, is that if we're going to continue to hold on to hope, uh, that sometimes we've got to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, look at somebody, tell them you, you got to dig a little deeper. You got to you got to dig a little. And in the text, it reminds us that we don't just get hype about the hope of the glory of God, but we also have to learn how to glory and find hope even in our sufferings. Uh, the pastor already told you that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. In other words, hope isn't just what we hold on to when things are going good. But hope is what we hold on to when stuff is going wrong. We've got to learn to hold on to hope. You see, hope is the seeds that we plant, and even when we don't even see the harvest. Okay, I'm trying to help somebody right here. Because so many of us, we find ourselves giving up before we've even planted the seed that's required to bring our harvest. Okay, okay, you still don't get it. When we look at a farmer, a farmer understands that when he surveys an empty a land a lot, that he is expecting a harvest, uh, uh, even though there is just a bunch of empty ground. He, he understands that there's some work he has to do uh, because he knows that the first thing he has to do in order to produce what he is uh, intending to take place, he's got to dig. He understands that no matter how rough the land may be, that he's got to get out a shovel and dig. He understands that he cannot just throw his seed onto the land without first digging it up so that it's fertile enough so that the seed takes hold. I'm trying to talk to somebody here. He understands that even the seed that he has in his hand really does not even reflect the harvest that he's believing is about to come forward. In other words, he understands that even when he's looking at the seed, that he's really just holding on to the promise of possibility. But he realizes that in order for me to get the harvest that I'm believing God has for me, that there are times in my life that I'm going to have to dig so that I can plant. Okay, y'all still ain't getting it. Because sometimes we find ourselves going through what we're going through. But I just came by to let somebody know that on this New Year's Eve of 2013, I'm begging and pleading with somebody. Don't you give up. Just dig a little deeper. I know that it feels like you've been digging for a long time. But there's some stuff that you've got to dig deeper. So that when you plant your seed, then it'll get root and nothing uh, can take it uh, from what you put. Uh, and is there a witness in the house uh, that in 2013 uh, that there were some things that you planted uh, and even when you felt like giving up, uh, something told you, uh, I just got to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, and even when you felt like uh, throwing in the towel, uh, you said, no, no, no. Uh, I just got to dig a little deeper and if I can get my seed in the ground I watch God produce a miracle out of my seed and I'm believing in 2014 that there's some stuff in 2013 that you've been digging and you've been wondering God when's it gonna come and God is saying just hold on to your hope because in 2014 God's about to reveal to you all that God has for you Look at somebody, tell them, hold on to your hope. I wonder if I've got about seven witnesses tonight who have a dig deeper testimony that when you think about where you used to be on a New Year's Eve night, if it wasn't for Grandma digging a little deeper, if it wasn't for Big Mom digging a little deeper, that there were prayers that went out for you. And because of Big Mom and because of Grandpa, you're where you are right now. Because somebody prayed for you. Somebody prayed to see the hope over your life. And the harvest has come. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in the house today. 
Third thing, if we're gonna get up out of here, uh, if you're gonna be able to hold on to hope, uh, you've got to understand that first, uh, you'd let go of the suffering, and second, you had to dig a little deeper. But third, you got to remember that hope won't let you down. Uh, uh, turn to somebody and say, baby, hope won't let you down. Hope. Uh, hope won't let you down. We look at that scripture. The thing I love about uh, uh, that scripture is it said um, in, in that fifth verse of the fifth chapter, and hope does not disappoint us uh, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. And one of the challenges for many of us, one of the challenges for many of us in dealing with trying to have a sense of expectation is that we have had so many people let us down. Uh, that we have had so many people throughout our life who are supposed to mean the most for us, supposed to do the best by us, supposed to uh, take care of us, supposed to love us, supposed to hold us, supposed to provide for us, supposed to protect us, who let us down. There were so many people uh, we put our faith and our hope in uh, that did not show up when they needed to show up, were not standing when they needed to stand, and ran when they should have fought. I wish I had a witness up in here. There are too many people, Lord have mercy, and the truth be told, many of us uh, I have a problem having a sense of expectation, not because everybody else let us down, but because we let our own self down. And there were times in which we were supposed to take care of us, and we didn't take care of us. There were times in which we were supposed to love us, and we didn't love us. There were times in which we were supposed to say a kind word to ourselves, and we were the biggest hater of the bunch. But I've come by to tell somebody you may have disappointed yourself, but hope won't let you down. I turn to your neighbor and say, baby, hope won't let you down. I don't care if your mama and your daddy didn't show up for the PTA meeting. Uh, uh, hope won't let you down. Uh, uh, I don't care if Big Ma and them did not take care of you the way you felt they should have taken care of you. Uh, uh, hope won't let you down. Uh, I don't care if that brother or that sister uh, uh, lied to you uh, and showed up with your best friend. Lord have mercy. Uh, when they said they loved it, did, did you? Uh, uh, but hope won't let you down. Uh, and I've come by to tell you to build a bridge and get over it. Uh, uh, that I don't care. Lord have mercy. Uh, what happened to you five years ago. What happened to you 10 years ago? What happened to you 20 years ago? But I've come by to tell you what can happen to you in 2014. I've come by to tell you what can happen to you right now before 2013 ends out. You've got to understand that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings has put love in your heart and God won't let you down. Is there anybody in the house today that knows that God will never leave you I don't forsake you and you can hold hope on the one that is above all ones you can hold your hope on the one that put the stars in space and put the moon in place and I got anybody in here who knows that you can rest your hope well I wish I had somebody in here that could do like my brother said earlier and say that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I know it's sounds like an old hymn, but them old folks knew what they were singing about. Now, now hold on, Lord, have mercy. Hope, hope won't let you down. Uh, if you allow me, uh, I, I, I just, I just read, uh, earlier today, earlier today around 4 o'clock, I went uh, by there's a church out in Waldorf, Maryland called the Tabernacle of Praise. Tabernacle of Praise, Pastor Tony Matthews. We went out there uh, to preach a little bit earlier this year, and, and, and it was an amazing thing because earlier this year, <laughs> earlier this year, uh, we had our church anniversary in April. We had our church anniversary in April, and, 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 and Reverend Harold Hayes, uh, as we turned seven years old, spoke a word over this house called the Seven Year Prophecy. Y'all remember that? Uh, he said, said to Community of Hope uh, that what used to take seven years is going to take seven months, and what used to take seven months is going to take seven weeks, and what used to take seven weeks is going to take seven days, and what used to take seven days is going to take seven hours, and what used to take seven hours is going to take seven minutes, and what used to take seven minutes is going to take seven seconds. And he spoke prophetically over Community of Hope, uh, uh, the, uh, this word of prophecy and this word of hope for us. And, and, and what messed me up, what messed me up, Community of Hope, is that, is that he prayed he spoke that over us the end of April. He spoke that over us the end of April. And by mid-May, I was in the hospital. Uh, by mid-May, I was in the hospital. And by June, I couldn't even preach. And if you all remember, Reverend Bill held down the pulpit for a full month. And I could not preach. And that the enemy had attacked my body. And I could not preach. Now, y'all got to understand uh, that me not preaching is like Michael Jordan not shooting ball. Uh, it's a problem. Amen, somebody. Uh, it, it is a problem. Uh, because I'm a preacher. That's what the heck I do. Uh, 
And, and if I don't preach, then there's a problem somewhere. And, and I'm sitting on my back and I'm, I'm having doctors look over me and try to figure out what in the world is wrong. And in the middle of that time that I was out, I, in the middle of that time, I just gotten out of the hospital. And, but I wanted to go to church that day. And I went by this church called the Tabernacle of Praise, my friend Tony Matthews. And I went there and, and, and I wasn't supposed to touch a mic because I, my body was still acting crazy on me. And, and the doctors had given me some medicine. We were still trying to figure some out stuff out. And, 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 but I went there because I just wanted to get a word on that Sunday morning. And, and, and as I went there to get a word, I told Pastor Matthew, he wanted me to preach. I said, no, I can't preach uh, because I've got to get my body right. Y'all, I told y'all, if I can't preach, it's a problem. Uh, and, and, but, but then along the journey, he asked me to bring greetings. And, and I went and I grabbed the mic and the Holy Ghost came up on me. And, and I went and I grabbed the mic and the Lord told me to tell them uh, that the prophecy that was given for Community of Hope uh, was also for them. And I went and I shared the seven-year prophecy with them. And as I shared it with them, uh, Pastor Matthews came up to me uh, and he said, Reverend, I don't know how the Lord sent you by today. He said, but tomorrow we meet with some people about a property that we're trying to get. I prayed over them and I said, I believe that the Lord, Lord have mercy, is going to give you what you need. Oh, Lord have mercy. We went by there a little bit later to preach after I was well, after my body was doing good, and after God had gotten me well. We went by there and the voices of hope were with us. And I talked to Pastor Matthews. And Pastor Matthews said, Reverend, you see that building across the street? Uh, we're going there on New Year's Eve. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, uh, today is New Year's Eve. And before I came to Community of Hope, I stopped by the Tabernacle of Praise. And I looked, Lord, have mercy, about how they had a new church. you got to understand that the old Tabernacle of Praise didn't even have an indoor bathroom. And they had to go over to another property across the parking lot just to use the bathroom. Uh, but the new tabernacle of praise uh, got four bathrooms uh, and even got a shower uh, because of what the Lord was able to do in them. Uh, I sat there uh, in their new sanctuary uh, and I went to lay before the Lord uh, and I started to pray before the Lord uh, and the Lord whispered to me, uh, I know you're preaching about hope tonight, uh, but you got to grab a hold of the hope I gave you uh, and not let that hope go. Uh, the Lord said, I know uh, that sickness trying to get in the way to let you forget about the word that I had for community of hope but you've got to understand that 2013 is over but community of hope seven year ain't over and it's four more months in community of hope seventh year and I need you to go and tell community of hope that what used to take seven years is going to take seven months what used to take seven months is going to take seven weeks what used to take seven weeks is going to take seven days. What used to take seven days is going to take seven hours. What used to take seven hours is going to take seven minutes. And what used to take seven minutes is going to take seven seconds. And I can get you to hold on to the word of God for this place. It's also the word of God for your house. I don't know what you came here in the of by 2014 is your year hold on to hope because hope works works in your relationships work in your marriage work with your children work with your finances work with your broken heart it'll work on your job it'll work in your school have I got anybody in the house today that knows that hope works and you're gonna hold on to hope I don't care what the doctor says hold on to hope I don't care what the lawyer says hold on to hope I don't care what the banker says hold on to hope hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on to hope hold on to hope hold on Somebody give God glory in the house. 
Come on, somebody give God a praise in the house. If you know that God is able, he's able, he's able. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. See ya. To stand all over the church. To stand all over the church, all that are able. Hey, go.